Hi everyone, this is Sandeep Anand. If there is one factor which is determinant of your success in personal mastery in any field you choose in life or even in the world of investing, and that factor is something called as momentum. Momentum is something we would have heard in our school days, we would have learned in physics. And uh, momentum is basically derived out of Newton's first law of motion or inertia, to some extent Newton's second law and third law. But now momentum is everything in life. The break in momentum can cause a complete halt to anything that we want to achieve or we are doing the pursuit on. So it's very important to keep up the momentum in whichever aspect you take and it immensely applies in the world of investing. It immensely impact the returns that you get from you know, the momentum factor. And it's very important to learn the momentum if you really want to be successful in the field of investing. People confuse momentum to be part of the trading mechanism, but it's actually not. Momentum is also one of the driving factors of your returns, even if you're a fundamentally long-term investor. So here is how Newton's law applies to the world of investing and what momentum is really means and how that applies. Take a look. So here is a presentation and a quick overview of Newton's law. We all have learned this, uh, you know, of motion, law of motion or law of inertia. Uh, you know, it says an object continues to be in a state of rest or in a motion uh, at a constant velocity unless otherwise acted upon by an external force. Now, uh, basic application of Newton's first law, the most common is the rocket launch. We all have learned this. So when the thrust increases and the weight decreases because the fuel burns, the force uh, tends to become, you know, the acting force will push it upwards. And uh, the force is nothing but the thrust minus weight. Now, uh, the takeaway from this is the unbalanced force is an external force that changes the motion of an object. So unless otherwise that unbalanced force comes or uh, when the object is at rest or in a motion at a constant velocity, all the forces acting on it are balanced. Now, momentum is kind of a derivative from this. We can easily understand momentum when we take this law into action, but momentum varies in terms of the force factors. It varies. It is not a constant velocity and momentum also act to uh, tend to help us understand the direction. And um, so in real life, it applies in many aspects of personal growth areas that includes, you know, progress uh, in achieving mastery that includes in skill development. If you want to learn anything new, we like, you know, uh, whether it is creating a blog or learning music or art or even writing books, many, any of the scenarios we take, uh, there are four simple steps to keep the momentum up. So it says like, you know, keep going and show up daily uh, that so that the momentum is on. Don't break the momentum, even if you have to spend just five minutes or 10 minutes a day and uh, on any task that we have to do. If not full flesh, if you are unable to, but still show up and do a little bit so that the momentum continues. Making progress is more important than perfection. So progress is equal to momentum and uh, more than perfection, waiting for the perfect day and time. Making some progress is important. Pers uh, persevere with the help of momentum. So one can only persevere connecting one on another and keeping up that momentum, it's very important. And, uh, you know, Novak uh, Djokovic, the famous uh, tennis player, uh, you know, world number top three players, he said, you know, I know that success does not come at once. It is not a thing achieved overnight. It is a result of many, many years of working and trying to achieve goals. So it's a momentum that keeps building up on every day and the progress is made and the success is achieved someday. So that's a very good quote I could correlate with respect to momentum from Djokovic. Now, uh, how it applies to markets, uh, momentum in markets, uh, in physics, it's a vector quantity. So it has two drivers. It has magnitude and direction. Since momentum has a direction, it can be used to predict the resulting direction and the speed of motion, which is nothing but the velocity. Now, Momentum is one of the broad general strategies to beat the markets uh, by buying stocks that have had higher returns over the last three months to 12 months. So stocks that are performing well over the last three, three to 12 months and making constantly new highs could be an indicator, leading indicator that something is working in favor of that company. It could be any of the factors. And overall, at the market level, you know, momentum strategy in investing is a very famous strategy adopted. And, uh, and how it correlates with Newton's law is objects in motion continues to move, but velocity will not remain constant in the market's 
paradigm. So that's something we need to understand. Now, rather Newton's second law defines the force as a rate of change of momentum. The forces causing the momentum in markets could be liquidity, it could be earnings growth, it could be the sales or the revenue growth or the product growth, it could be the market sentiments that can cause the momentum. It could be lack of alternatives that can be an underlying force. It could be innovations, uh, you know, newly found uh, innovations and technology or industry transformation. All of these could be uh, contributing factor, galvanizing factors for that momentum to keep up that velocity or to increase the velocity. But the most important takeaway in momentum with markets is it's unpredictable. The upside could be unpredictable, same as a downside. So because we can only predict the direction to some extent, to a greater extent, but uh, you know the level or the velocity, the speed of motion really cannot be predicted. And uh, momentum term in investing world measures the velocity of price changes uh, as opposed to the actual price levels. And uh, momentum investing as a strategy turns value investing on its head because uh, value investing was focused on uh, the cheap bargains available, which does not move at all for a long period of time, test the patience, and someday the market realizes the value. And uh, momentum investing is focused to capitalize on the continuation of an existing market trend. So the continuum of the market trend is what catches up the momentum and takes the trade up. Now, it involves buying stocks, showing upward trending prices. The strategy also maintained that upward or downward trends can persist for some time and uh, for foreseeable future. It does not break very easily, making huge returns by investing in stocks, uh, showing trends over a three to 12 months strategy. So, um, you know, if, if the last three to 12 months has gone up, so uh, uh, continuously, there could be a reason why the, the stocks are moving up. Richard Dreyhus is considered as a father of momentum investing. Richard considered earnings as the fountainhead of future stock price movements and that too quarter on quarter. So uh, he predicated his thesis on the basis of earnings and uh, for the future uh, stock price movement. So as I said, it could be any of the factors. Earnings could be one of the underlying factor and most common underlying factor, or it could be sales growth. But there are other aspects and sentiments which can drive the momentum. Now, accelerating earnings, upward revisions by management, sustained earnings growth are all tailwinds for the momentum force, according to Richard. So that is his philosophy of momentum. He's practiced it very successfully. But momentum is, a, is an important factor to understand even for long-term investors, because if the moment is broken, momentum is broken, it is very difficult to get back on the same uh, trail. Now, here are some of the Momentum trends, recent examples, I just pulled up a few scenarios, you know, where, uh, you know, some of these factors are playing in, as we are seeing, you can see that uptrend, you know, with the stock prices. So let's take electric vehicles and earnings growth. So we have Tesla, you could see until 2020, nothing moved. I mean, Tesla was flat for the last four years, five years, and it was on a uh, same trend. I mean, price range and suddenly things kicked off after, uh, the market started perceiving the company in a different format due to its potential to the, in the electric vehicle and the overall uh, renewable energy segment. So you could see how that momentum is keeping up, right? And um, same is the case with uh, edge computing fastly, a company that would IPO, it was flat until a point and suddenly edge computing started becoming, uh, gaining, gaining the market's attention especially in the world of 5G and uh, mobile computing. So that was uh, another example. Then we could see that then sometimes, you know, it could go on for years. So shift to digital commerce acceleration. So this has been a trend over many years, uh, over a decade, probably uh, with Amazon, uh, many examples we have. And, uh, but <clears throat> it recently accelerated the physical to digital. We all know the reason. So uh, you could see a sudden spike and the momentum continuing in this area. Cloud was another area where, you know, till 2017, it's although started last decade, many people wrote, wrote it off in the early part of the decade, 2010 to 2014, but again, started gaining traction in the later part of second half of the decade. And last couple of years, we have seen how the cloud, um, you know, acceleration is happening, it, the upsurge in growth is happening. So one important underlying factor is all these have significant earnings or revenue growth that is supporting the growth, supporting the up move. And so it's not just, you know, the market perception alone. 
and uh, digital payments another trend you know which has been catching up over the last decade we saw how square paypal all of them have made that uptrend so when this momentum is there the shift is happening until unless the earnings or the revenues reverses or slows down or the addressable market size reduces the momentum is going to continue and uh, the velocity could vary but the direction remains same which is important factor we have to understand and so uh, momentum is a that we can dedicate in fact uh, there are many books around this uh, can dedicate a lot of sessions for that but it's a very important concept to understand to uh, the be to gain the insights into the market behavior and especially on the company's behavior and the price actions uh, you know so momentum is also one of the important strategies one need to learn so i thought i'll bring this up in uh, to my audience hope this was helpful thanks for staying with me until now